We are uh, starting a new series today, just kind of a break that we'll come back to Philippians when, when we're, we're done with this. And uh, it, it's uh, talking about getting a grip on your emotions. Well, we all have emotions. God gave us these wonderful, beautiful uh, emotions that are a part of our lives. Sometimes we're happy and, and, and you kind of walk around doing the happy dance and, and you might not even know it, but people are like, hey, what's going on? You know, you, you, you were, just, we're just happy. God created that in us. Uh, sometimes we're sad um, and... Uh, you know, it's kind of gloomy. Sometimes it's just kind of hard to get out of bed. Sometimes we're so proud, maybe of our children. Uh, as a parent, I, I can say that's usually my, my pride moments. I just like, your heart's just like beating out of your chest. You're just like, man, look what they're doing. I'm so, so proud of them, you know, or, or, or their accomplishment or something. Anyway, they're all part of the emotions that we have. And generally speaking, most of us, our emotions are in check. You know, we, we kind of can keep control. We're not like too crazy, too wild, too low, too high. We just kind of can keep in check. But once in a while, our emotions can pull a number on us and, 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 uh, and kind of grab a hold of us and maybe cause us to say some things or do some things we wouldn't normally do or they're maybe a little bit out of our character, high or low, we, both ways. It will kind of grab us. Um, we've all said things out of anger or maybe out of sadness that are completely, you know, not, like I said, not in our character. It could be stress. It could be a lack of sleep, you know. I mean, it could be a number of, of things going on. It doesn't really matter, but we know it has happened. It's happened to, to all of us. And my hope through this uh, series is, actually, these are scriptures we'll use in Vacation Bible School later. So, so this will kind of introduce all the adults to know what your children will be, will be uh, uh, learning later this summer and... and um, Anyway, that's, that's kind of the, the, where this series is coming from. Um, but my, my, my hope is that for us to look at this scripture and, and get some uh, ideas to how to manage uh, these emotions that we have so that we express them in a, in, in a healthy way. And in today's emotion, uh, so that we can experience it maybe more fully uh, than, than we would had we not thought about it this way. Because uh, we're, we're going to start with joy. And, and joy and happiness, like, like Brian said, they're, they're somewhat connected. They're very much different, but they're somewhat connected. We often think of them similar uh, together. You're happy, you kind of feel like you have joy, or, or when you rejoice, you're, you're the happiness that comes with it. So they're pretty closely related, and I'm not going to get into the separation of it today. I often would, but uh, not today. What we're going to do, though, because you all, there's nothing that brings joy like a pop quiz, right? We're going to take a pop quiz. And uh, so, but don't worry, don't, don't be, you know, don't be concerned, don't, don't sink into a sadness yet, because this isn't going to be really hard, but uh, it, 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 it's, uh, I think you can, you can handle this. Let's, let's say we got the, the church basketball league, right, and we have this basketball team, and we want to uh, grow, we want to have a good basketball team, we want to hit the championship in the church league, right, and there's two people available to be on our team. Uh, one is Kobe Bryant, the former NBA star, he's not doing anything anymore, right, um, and, and the other one would be Jackie Moon from the movie Semi-Pro. Who, who, who do you want to get? Uh, how, how, many, how many say Kobe? Kobe? Yeah. Jackie? Okay, see, this isn't hard at all, right? <laughs> it wasn't hard at all. Yeah, pretty, pretty easy. Okay, let's go another direction. Let's say you've signed up for the uh, science fair, and uh, you have a, a, one partner you can have. You can choose Einstein. Uh, who is available, because he's not doing much these days, or you have a choice uh, between two, uh, Lloyd or Harry from Dumb and Dumber. Okay, Who are you going to choose? Einstein, Einstein, you guys are smart. Okay, very, very, very good. Right. Uh, let's say your daughter is getting married, and uh, being the socialite that you are, you want to make sure that everyone's very impressed with uh, you know, your family, and you want to show them how well off you're doing, and you have two choices in the chef, for the wedding dinner. One is Gar Gordon Ramsay, who's a Scottish chef. He's known as one of the top 10 chefs in the world. And the other one is Chef Boyardee, uh, <laughs> who is known for the cheese ravioli and to tomato sauce. Who are you going to go with? Unlimited budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, you're going to go with the, the I, mean, I mean, come on, who doesn't like a little, little Chef Boyardee? You're going you're to go with that. One, one more question, one more question. This is, this is a tough one. Let's say you're the son of God, and you want to change the world. And you've got to pick some caregivers who will hold the message of this eternal kingdom message that you've come to bring. And you have two people to choose from. One is a group of aliens who will force people into submission. And the second is the person you see every time you look in the mirror. Who do you think Jesus chose? Yeah, 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 yeah you know how this goes. Uh, you. You. He chose us with the most important message ever 
in the history of the universe. In Luke 10, Jesus is out and about, and he's preaching the kingdom of God, and, and he is the A team, right? I mean, he is, he's obviously the, he's, he's, he's the home run king. He's the one who knows the kingdom. He's explaining the kingdom. He's defining the kingdom. He, he is the Messiah ushering in the kingdom, right? So he's the A team. He also has the B team with him. There's the disciples. Uh, they don't know everything, but he, they've been hand-taught. They've been hand-selected. They've got a lot of extra time with Jesus. And then there's the C team, which is a group of people who just kind of hang out. Maybe they've heard him teach once or twice. Maybe, maybe, maybe they've seen him a few times, but they don't know a whole lot, not as much as the disciples, and certainly not as much as Jesus. And in Luke chapter 10, Jesus calls on the C team, and he pulls aside 72 people, other people, the text says, and sends them out to represent his kingdom with the most important message in the universe. It's in Luke 10, verses 1 and 2. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others, and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So he picks 72 people, common, everyday people, to go out and preach and teach and harvest souls for the kingdom of God. Now, he also tells them, which we're not going to read, don't take any money with you, don't take any supplies with you. Uh, hey, it's going to be a little rough out there. Uh, he says, you're going to be like sheep among wolves. Now, who doesn't want to hear that if you're the C team going out to play the A team? <laughs> this is going to be great. Uh, I am not excited about this. But he sends him out saying that basically, hey, I know you have no experience. You don't know a lot. You don't know much at all. Go on out there. They're going to kill you probably. This is going to be wonderful. You're going to really enjoy this. I mean, it's not like they've gone through five years of, of discipleship training with Jesus. It's not like they have just finished up the evangelism training that uh, Jesus put on in a neat little video in a back room or anything that he gave them. He did not hand them any cool tools like, a, like the Jesus film or, or some pamphlet. I mean, he just said, go on out there and represent me. 72 common, ordinary, untrained people who had heard Jesus a time or two had been empowered by Jesus to go two by two through the communities talking about the kingdom of God. Now, whose crazy idea was that? Well, Jesus is <laughs> the same guy who kind of gives us the same assignment and says, yeah, I know you don't know much. <laughs> I know you're the C team. Don't worry about it. Go on out there. You got this. The same guy who's, who, who told us our mission in life is to make disciples of, G, of people and then to baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, to teach them everything that we know that he's taught us, that, that we have access to, uh, to the very end of the age. It, it's, it's that guy. Now, now, by now you might be thinking, what in the world does this have to do with joy? If you're, I, mean, I hope you're thinking that. I hope you haven't checked out yet. <laughs> what in the, I mean, this has this is nothing to do with, with joy. This is crazy. Well, stay with me here. <laughs> the 72 people go out and they preach and they teach. They represent the kingdom. They cast out demons. They pe heal people who are sick. And verse 17 says, the 72 returned with, what's the word? Joy. 72 people went out clueless. They came back with, with joy. People who were sheep among wolves. Uh, you would expect this verse to say the 72 came back with all kinds of horror stories, of people who slammed the doors in their faces, uh, people who, uh, you know, stories of extreme rejection and failure, stories of people throwing it back in their faces, stories of people uh, laughing at them or maybe, maybe even uh, harming them or threatening to harm them, challenging their faith. And it's quite possible all of that happened. I mean, Jesus did warn them, hey, and by the way, you know, just shake the dust off your feet and keep going if you know, people are ignoring me. He, he said it could happen, but they didn't come back with their heads hanging. They didn't come back feeling depressed or sad, feeling like failures. They weren't talking about all the people who rejected the message because look, look how many people we told, only these people actually you know, listened to it. They came back as just filled with joy, filled with joy, because that's what happens when you're in the middle of doing what God wants you to do, whatever it is he's called you to do. That's what happens. We do the craziest things to try to find happiness in our lives, don't we? I mean, we, just, we, we all do this. Uh, we, we, to find joy, to try, if I try to find that fulfillment. We, we do some crazy things. Well, we're, we're feeling down, so we order a pizza. Anybody ever do that? Hey, you don't look like this, you know. <laughs> 
right? I've done that a time or two. Uh, you're, you're feeling stressed, maybe you grab a drink. You're feeling bored. Uh, maybe a movie will lift my spirits. Uh, feeling lonely, go out and hunt for a new romantic partner. Uh, feeling any of those things, you go shopping. Retail therapy, you know, uh, that, that's a common word because that's what we do. Or maybe we go running or we go sleeping or whatever. You know, just like, I'm just going to sleep and make it all go away. We, we do all kinds of crazy things. But long-lasting joy doesn't come from any of those. Long-lasting joy doesn't come from the perfect meal. Uh, I've eaten plenty of meals because of stress or because maybe this will make me feel better. Uh, I just need a Dairy Queen. That'll make, me, that'll make everything better. Then I eat it, and it's really good for five or ten minutes or half an hour or an hour or, I don't know, maybe an afternoon. But then I'm like, well, I'm kind of hungry now again. You know, it, it never lasts forever. It doesn't come from being engaged in the perfect relationship with another person or, or uh, finally heading out for that anticipated vacation. How many times have you just been looking forward to a vacation? You're like, so excited, so excited, and you finally leave like 10 minutes down the road, you're already fighting with the family. You know, with, I mean, you're like, this was supposed to bring the ultimate fulfillment. <laughs> when is this going to get over? It's like, you just started. You haven't left town hardly yet. Uh, <laughs> it just doesn't, it doesn't always work. Here, here's the thing. Joy comes from being in the middle of God's will and engaged in God's kingdom work. That's, that's what I get from these verses of these 72 people of the C team who went out doing crazy things they never thought they could do and came back going, I can't believe it. <laughs> this, this, is, this is crazy. And, and I was kind of thinking about this, the, this whole idea this week, thinking, wow, you know, you think about it, over your lifespan, I can, I can think back over my lifespan. The things that stick out as the times of real joy or happiness in my life were the times I was, I was involved in God moments with other people. Like, like Brian said earlier, like if you've ever been at a baptism and you get emotional, you're, like, you're, you're, you're there, you're, you're engaged, you're excited for that person, that brings, that brings legitimate, genuine joy in your life. Uh, yesterday was uh, our do- youngest daughter Shanna's 10-year uh, birthday, uh, second birthday of, of her um, baptism. And uh, I, I mean, I, I can just think of so many times I've been like, right like the one looking in their face when they come out of the water and, and just the look in, in people's eyes and, and the joy and, and the joy of the crowd and the, the, the hooping and hollering, the clapping. You know, and then I, then I think of the celebration of, of, of the heavenly beings celebrating at what's going on. It, it's just this moment of, of joy. Those are the things I, I think about uh, that, that bring, have brought joy in my life. I've had a lot of ice creams, and, and that brought some you know, temporary stuff. But man, those, they don't even compare to, to the baptisms I've been a part of. Some of my favorite memories in life are, are being in a Bible study, a Sunday school class, a small group, whatever. It doesn't matter the context where we're talking the Bible in someone's living room, whatever, and like the light bulb comes on, you know, and you can see like they, they're getting this. There's a hunger and there's a, a thirst. For, for, for God, and, and, and all of a sudden they're like, they're getting it for the first time. There's nothing more, exci- nothing gets my blood pumping more than that. I look back over the years at the times I've been in, in, engaged in those conversations where people were understanding Jesus for the first time. They're starting to really get Scripture, talking about maybe Scripture they read on their own. doesn't matter if I was there or not, but by hearing them talk about it, those are moments of, of, of great joy. There is no joy on earth like being in the front seat of a person coming to know Jesus Christ and repenting of their sins and, and wanting to know, how do I follow him in my everyday life? That's it. <laughs> There's joy that comes from that. Now, if you uh, teach a Sunday school class or lead a small group or involve the Bible study where you hear these conversations going on, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly when, when a child gets it in a lesson and maybe they come back the next week and they, they say they did what you did, or an adult, uh, a person, a, a follower, a disciple comes back and says, well, I, I, I did what you said, you know, and, and, and you were right. And, and, it, and, and it's, just, it's just a huge joy in a person's life when someone's making a life change. Maybe as a small group you were discussing something and someone processes and comes home and come back the next week to small group and they say, man, I, I did that and, and God's really working on my life. And it, it, the whole group has joy in that being a part of what God's doing in, 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 in someone else's life. Now, there are times when uh, the joy isn't so natural. Uh, we have both gamuts of, of the emotions, right? And then things go sour in our lives, you go through difficulties, or, or, or something could be going on, and the joy might seem more distant. You're like, yeah, joy would be kind of cool, but it's not there right now. 
Uh, some of you may have saw this video we posted on our Facebook uh, page uh, this week, but I want to share with you a short clip from Mitch McVicker. He's coming doing the concert here in a, in a few weeks, May 5th. And uh, he was here this past week driving through town. So, hey, stop in the studio. We'll, we'll do some recording. And uh, we did a little, little uh, session with him. And here's, here's a guy who was known sorrow, uh, who, whose friend died uh, in the same car. They were in the car to Rich Mullins. Uh, they, were, they were driving, and, and um, Rich died. He somehow survived the accident, was in a coma. He'll kind of explain some of that in, in the video. Um, and who, that was some 20 years ago now and is, is uh, figuring out still joy from that. He's finding that as he serves and engage, um, he had just finished playing uh, a song that he and Rich had pl- written together, and it's won Dove Awards and stuff, and, and, and he kind of came out of that song, and, and we began the conversation. I just want you to hear what he had to say. I, I suppose people will start talking about that again pretty soon, you know, and, and, and in the in the the reunion. And um, I remember that impacting me from far away. You know, I was a big fan, uh, real dedicated listener, had all the albums and all that stuff, and it was just like, man, couldn't couldn't believe that. But but man, you lived it, like you were there, right? Right. So, what was God done in your life? I mean, through that, I mean. Could the, Gosh, through that, um, I'm still, still figuring all that out. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, and I say that as if I will ever get it figured. Right. Out. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I uh, how how God is is working in me through that. Uh, uh, maybe the uh, you know the the best answer is I go well. I'm doing this now. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm grateful for this opportunity. I'm grateful for the the molding and the making that, that went on uh, then. I'm great, grateful for the molding and making that went on now. I miss my friend. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm grateful for the for the influence that, that he uh, had upon me, as he had upon many many people. Sure. Um, I have, you know, hopefully uh, become more sensitive to the to the uh, um, uh, kingdom of God. Um, and, uh, and because you know we are we are called to to live in need, yeah. Um, uh, to to to, uh, to to depend um, upon God, um, and we try to make ourselves pretty self sufficient. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when you're um, but when you're uh, uh, Stripped of a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's it's a it's um let's see it's a uh, it's a gracious thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's we when we're going through something hard, we don't see it that way. Right. You know, but uh, it's often it's the hard the the hard things that make us who we are. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm you know um, I'm grateful for the uh, the good that I got to experience. Uh, last night and this morning um, and now um, I'm grateful for the, the good the good that uh, uh, I got to experience back then um, and uh, and you know grateful for the hardship yeah, yeah. And, and that's you know I go dude are you are you meaning what you're saying and I go I hope so yeah, yeah. <laughs> right yeah. well we kind of we kind of gloss over those verses in scripture how you know the hardship produces character and, and, and so forth and we think yeah yeah that's really great but uh it, it's uh, uh it is it is the pain uh in our lives that when, when god really works and and works in us and through us and 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 teaches us and and molds us and yeah you, you would not be the person you are today uh, had not that happened i would not be the person i am today had not things in my past you know happened and uh, it's just we're all there, you know, but at different levels and different different hardships, obviously. Yeah, but, uh, it is an orchestration, man. Yeah, everything is connected, and it's it's, yeah. a, it's a beautiful thing to yeah. to try and take in. For anybody who's listening that might not know what what I'm really talking about, you know, in go, going through the wreck, I was pretty hurt and uh, in the hospital for a long time with bro- broken bones and closed head injury. I was in a coma, and. Um, uh, and the recovery process was was a long on ongoing one, and I, I didn't know what would become of me if anything. You know, uh, 
relearning to to uh, eat and drink and, and walk and talk and all that stuff and, and so it was that that's what I'm talking about when I say um, when you're stripped of stuff and how we are we are uh, pushed towards pulled towards however God gets to us we are we are uh, to, we are to be in need and independence upon God, but, but like I said, we we uh, we, we got to have stuff yanked out from under us a lot of times for that to happen. Mm -hmm. The man has had uh, um, has been to the bottom, right, the bottom of, of the pit, and, and and has clawed himself back with the help of God by engaging in, in kingdom work. His full time you know, job is ministry and of music and and writing songs and and uh, doing these concerts and and um, uh, he, he, as, as the struggle is still real but it still fills his heart with joy with, with joy you can you can see the struggle and see it in his eyes even and, and his voice as, as he's speaking through now the 72 that Jesus sent out uh, they, they found this out too that there is joy in in, in serving God Verse 17 says, the 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. And now it's kind of fun to talk about this, the supernatural side of this story. It's like, well, that's kind of cool, some of the stuff, you know, and kind of imagine maybe what some of the stuff they were doing. But look at the human side of this one. Everything in their personal lives faded away when they began serving God and other people. Because being part of God moments in people's lives energizes you and fills you with joy. They came back filled with, with joy. We don't know what was going on in all the 72 people's lives. We don't know how their home life was or, the, or their work life or you know health or all the different things that could possibly ail you. They came back, though, filled with joy. But here's the thing. Jesus then says a kind of, uh, I would say, a most unexpected thing. A after he's seeing the natural result of joy in their lives from what they were going, he says, yeah, don't, don't rely fully on that for joy. Uh, because even that has its limits. That there's something even, even better. There's, there's a step even further. He says in verse 20, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, the, what they just said, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That, that joy of service, even it has, as much as I'd like to say that is the ultimate, it has its limits. There are times you get tired, there are times you might face burnout, there are times you, know, yeah, you go through issues right, in life, but, but there is n that next step of joy that Jesus talks about is just knowing our name is written in, in heaven. Now, there's a few things we know about heaven. There's, there's a lot of things we don't know about heaven, and, and we can have all kinds of conversations about what do you think heaven is going to be like, but there's some things we just do know about heaven that should be enough that whatever's going on in our lives, that, that we can look at that area of our lives and say, you know what, uh, there's heaven coming. It's, it's, it's going to be, oh, the, my eternity is going to be way better than my, my, my situation right now. A few things we know. We know that we'll have new bodies. Uh, 1 Corinthians 5 says, uh, we know that if the tent that is, our earthly home is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made from hands, eternal in the heavens. For this, in this tent, we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. Uh, whatever your images of your body, however your body feels, whatever you think about your body, isn't it kind of nice to know uh, someday you'll get a new one? <laughs> I don't, the older I get, the more I think, hey, that doesn't sound so bad. When I was in my 20s, I was like, I don't know, I kind of like my body, you know. But, but the old, I'm not, I'm not that old yet, but... but there are times I think, yeah, new body might be cool. <laughs> I've kind of, I've kind of maybe abused this one a little bit too much. What, whatever, whatever hurts in or on your current body won't hurt in your new body. Whatever doesn't work in your current body, if there's something on the inside or outside, whatever that doesn't work in your body, it will work in your new body. Whatever you don't like about your body, <coughs> it, you, you're, it's going to be not an issue in your new body. And I don't know what the new body is going to look like. But, but we do know that there's a spiritual aspect where Jesus could like walk through doors that were locked and, and appear places. And we also know there's a physical aspect where he could like eat fish and talk and walk and have relationships with, with, with people. Uh, so so I, I don't know what that's going to look like. He's the firstborn from among the dead. We're going to be made like him. And, and so who knows? We can get into all kinds of questions about that. But we know it's going to be an improvement with whatever we got now. And it tells me to never allow... Uh, my physical body to drive my emotions, whether it's pride or sorrow or happiness or joy. It's just like, it's just what it is. It's just my tent. 
That's, that, that's not my spirit. It's not my eternal part of me. It's just a temporary thing. Anyway, let, let that give you joy. Another thing we know about heaven is that we'll have a new home. I saw a new heaven, a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. The sea was no more. I saw the holy city and new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. John 14 says, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Right? Uh, and, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am you may be also. Now, I don't know what that new home is going to look like, but it's going to, it's going to be an improvement for mine. I guarantee it'll be an improvement from yours. It's, just, it's, just, it's going to be all right. God makes it sound pretty good. Uh, don't let your home uh, drive your emotions. It may be too big, might be too small, might be not nice enough, it might be plenty nice. It might, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's all temporary. It's all going to burn. One day you'll have uh, the eternal home, and that's what gives us joy for, for, for the future and kind of keeps us in balance. Right? Number three, uh, we're going to live with God. We know that much about heaven. Uh, Revelation 21, chapter 21, verse 3, I heard a, a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. God himself will be with them as their God. Part of us being in our new home is this face-to-face -face relationship we'll have with God. I don't know, again, I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know the details, but that sounds pretty cool. I like my relationship with God now. It can grow. It's a little bit mysterious. It's a little bit invisible. <laughs> you know? uh, but, but it's not going to be then. It, it's going to be an improvement. Uh, it's going to be an improvement. That's a good thing. And the last thing we know, there's, there's more, but the last thing we'll talk about that we know about heaven is, is we'll have no pain or sadness. That sound okay? I, I, I'm thinking that sounds all right. Revelation 21, verse 4, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning or crying or pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. There, there's things in this world that can get you down. Not there. Not there. There's things in, in, in this life uh, that can give you moments of, of sadness. Not, not there. There are times you will have pain here. It could be a physical pain. He hurts today, or, or it could be a, an emotional pain, or a scar, or a spiritual pain. Not, not there. There are plenty of things on earth that can cause us to cry. Plenty of things. Won't it be amazing to have the Father himself just wipe that tear away? You're okay. You're, you're home now. You're home. No more death. No more pain. No more tears. Never again, ever but we have to face the death of a loved one. Hardest thing on life here. Never again will we face it there. But what I think of this does, the stuff we've talked about, is kind of just, it evens out the playing field a little bit when it comes to our emotions. It keeps us, keeps us from having prolonged extreme emotions. You're going to have valleys. You're going to have mountains. Both of them are part of, part of life. This kind of evens it out. A little bit and puts it in perspective. When you're feeling down, uh, focus on the people around you who, who need Jesus and, and serve them. Focus on what is to come, uh, our next place, a residence, our permanent residence as a child of God. Let that be an encouragement to you. When you're feeling too high, come, come back to earth a little bit. Focus on the kingdom work that still needs to be done. We're not done. There's plenty to do. There's lots to be done. Uh, so, so don't get too high up either. There are classes that need to be taught, people that need to be discipled, friends that need to be invited to church. There's a lot of work to be done that can fill your life with joy. <music>